with the mask, you can't tell if you have a glasses on or glasses off. And then I reach, I go, oh, it's on my head. So I Baruch Dayan HaEmet, we praise the judge of truth. We begin with Psalm 121. Esai Ezri mei madronai ose shamayim va'aretz. Al yiten lamot raglecha, al yanum shomrecha. Hine lo yanum v'lo yishan shomer Yisrael. Adonai shomrecha, Adonai tzilcha al yad liminecha. Yomam ha-shemesh lo yekeka v'yarech v'layla. Adonai shmarcha mikol ra. Yishmor et navshecha. Adonai shmar tzilcha v'uecha me'ata v'ad olam. I lift up mine eyes unto the mountains, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way. Your protector will not slumber or sleep. The Lord is your guardian. He is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you from all harm. He will guard your soul. You're going and you're coming from this time forth and forever. Death has taken our beloved Arkadi Shainton. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God, and be with them. For Arkadi's love that united us in life and which death cannot sever. For his companionship that was shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory. For the gifts of his heart and his mind, which brought joy and which brought happiness, and now are a precious remembrance. For all of these things and more, we give our thanks to God. It is a privilege to call forward daughter Angela to speak words of her dear father to be followed by Lucy to speak words of her uh, Yadushka I ask for the forgiveness of the Lord I don't know 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 Почтите провести последний путь моего отца. Он был самый золотой и самый любимый. Луч, лучший папа я на свете никогда не видел. И мне очень жаль, что он ушел очень так рано. Он хотел дожить до своих 85, он дожил. Он хотел дожить до бармыства первого правнука, но не получилось. Пап, мы тебя очень любим. Будем помнить тебя всегда твоей улыбкой, когда ты говорил, что все хорошо. Девочки, у меня все прекрасно. Мы тебя очень любим и помним. Спасибо большое. Я хочу сказать большое всем спасибо. Он всегда будет с нами. Он всегда в наших сердцах. Нам будет не хватать его. Нам будет не хватать... Арал сказал, с кем я буду ездить на рыбалку. Некому будет сказать Астер Майфейгова и Левчику Давидович. Он ему всегда говорил, я не знаю, я тебя так сильно люблю, но почему, я даже не знаю. Мы всегда это будем вспоминать, это всегда будет в наших сердцах. Он был самый лучший, как мама сказала. Дедушка, 
отец, прадедушка, нам его будет не хватать. И некому будет сказать, Любочка, можешь, пожалуйста, сделать то-то или это. Мы только это будем вспоминать, это будет в наших сердцах, и, и, и все. И опять же, большое спасибо всем. Я знаю вашу семью много лет и знаю папу много лет с Одессы. Он работал вместе с моим мужем здесь. И кроме всего хорошего ничего нельзя сказать. Хороший друг, всегда с улыбкой. И мы все будем помнить его. Светлая память, Аркадий, тебе. Твои дети, внуки, жена будут всегда помнить тебя forever. Спи спокойно. To all of those words spoken as a prayer, let us say Amen. Amen. We gather on this sunny, sunny afternoon to recall a man, a mensch, a good, decent man, our dear Arkady. He was nice. He was kind. He was laid back. You could count on him to help. He was always very helpful. This family and the journey that this family took to come from Russia in 2000 is a reminder, one we should consider consciously. We should consider life under communism. In the Soviet Union, as most of you know, Jews were constrained by the shackles of communism. Most Jews did not practice outwardly. Jewish education had been outlawed since the Bolshevik Revolution, 1917. Jews were Jewish in their hearts and in their souls. And while talking with Lucy and Angela yesterday, a poignant, bittersweet story came to mind. This is a story I've told many times, and every time we recount this story, it is uh, bittersweet, and it is also fills us with a sense of comfort. It goes back to 1948 and the birth of the State of Israel. In 1948, Golda Meir went to the Soviet Union as the first Israeli ambassador. And no one knew how the Russian Jews would react. There had been no legal Jewish education, as you know, since 1917. And the Israelis thought, perhaps uh, the Jews, they're gone. So she opened the Israeli embassy for tea on Friday evenings, not for Shabbos services, for tea. Some came. But the Russian Jews had been warned to keep their distance from the Israeli delegation and the Israelis were also apprehensive about making contact even with their own relatives. On Rosh Hashanah in 1948, which was October 4th, 1948, word spread that Golda was going to uh, go to services for the Holy Day. She was going to go to the Choral Synagogue and tens of thousands of Jews Tens of thousands of Moscow's Jews went to that synagogue, and they gathered outside. And Golda wrote in her autobiography, instead of the 2,000 Jews who usually came to synagogue on the holidays, a crowd of close to 50,000 was waiting for us, 50,000. 
and for a minute she said I could not grasp what had happened or even who they were and then it dawned on me they had come these good brave Jews in order to demonstrate their sense of kinship and to celebrate the establishment of the state of Israel and they called her name Golda Golda and they lined up in front of the synagogue to see her to touch her to wave to her to welcome her and Golda wrote in her autobiography that she was so moved she could barely speak and as she made her way through the crowd she said the only Yiddish she knew Gedank Gedank thank you thank you thank you for remaining Jews and it is a similar sentiment this afternoon as we look at one another even in our shock because this was a shock and even in our sadness there's a sense of gratitude in our hearts thank you for remaining Jews and thank you for trying to find a way to nourish the Jewish part of your soul Arkady was born September 18th 1935 his parents of blessed memory Lev and Esther he was one of three children his parents are of blessed memory of course one of three children he is the eldest of a shalom of blessed memory he has a sister Raisa who lives in New York and we send our condolences to her and his sister Musia Maria she is also of blessed memory he was an uncle he had nieces and nephews so he was born in Odessa and his dad Lev went to the Red Army so during the war Arkady was helping take care of the family as a kid he was working anywhere he could to support the family things like picking apples and then selling the apples during the war they were evacuated as many were from Odessa they went to Almata Kazakhstan I looked on a map it's about 2,500 miles east or 4,200 4,200 kilometers it's a long way and they went and they lived there they were evacuated as many people were and then when the war was over they came back to Odessa and his father Lev passed away at the end of the war in 1945 Arkady and Ludmila met at a dance and they dated for three years before getting married he was 27 she was 20 they were married July 4th 1962 for America July 4th it's a big deal for them big deal because they got married a beautiful wonderful marriage of 58 years Kanahora it's a, it's a beautiful thing 58 years they took care of one another and they were blessed with two children and one two three grandchildren and one two three four five six great-grandchildren Larissa lives in Israel her husband Vladimir Angela lives here and then the grandchildren Yevgeny married to Natasha they have a, a daughter Kira it's a great-granddaughter Lucy she's married and married to Alex and they have children son RL daughter Esther or Esther and son Leon and Anatoly his wife Rebecca in Florida and their children Dimitri and Dominic he worked at a transportation company we tried to understand what that means and it, uh, it's called ooh, garage Konohovskovo close choo -choo. you know it's a little it's not so easy sometimes he worked at a transportation company and I said what was that he would drive if if they needed milk delivered all of these trucks would deliver milk to places and people would wait in line if they were doing other things they drove transportation to these places so people could come and get the things 
his hobby. As soon as it was getting warm, he had a cottage, right? Uh, Dacha, right? On the Black Sea. And the family was living there. From the month of May until November, he went. He built everything by himself, all the stone by himself. It was amazing, Lucy said, as we were growing up. He loved fishing. He would get up at 4.30 in the morning to go fishing. What kind of fish? Well, I mean, you know, in the Black Sea, they don't have everything, but okay, so he had fish. Was it good? All right, that's the most important. All right. Vakuzna. Right, Ochen Vakuzna. It was delicious. Yeah, laugh at my Russian, please. It's supposed to make you laugh. He loved gardening. He grew delicious tomatoes. The best in the whole village, his granddaughter said, of Chermemorka. He was very kind. He was very nice. He was laid back. Lucy said, I don't think, we don't think he had any enemies. You know, no one ever really had a bad thing to say about him. He was a kind man. And even if somebody did something bad, you know, he would give the person the benefit of the doubt. Not everybody gives the benefit of the doubt, but he would give the benefit of the doubt. He was an amazing father and grandfather. He never hid that he was a Jew. He never did. He always said he was a Jew. And he would say, you know, in every religion, you have good people and you have bad people. This is true. Family doesn't remember anybody really saying anything bad to him because he was a Jew. And if anyone asked him for help, he would help. He probably would give help to people before they would ask even to. He always shared with everyone. He shared with his two sisters. The family was reminded of uh, some trip that was supposed to go to Australia, and they only agreed they would all go if they would all go. But not everybody could go, so they didn't go. He wasn't going to take a trip to get out of Russia to go to Australia, which oh, that would be nice to get out of the country. But he didn't do it if his sisters couldn't go. And there were family, a nephew, I think, was in the army, you said, right? Couldn't go, so it didn't go. But he shared equally with his sisters and their families. And then he was always a good son for his mom. He was a good brother to his sisters. He said, the great grandkids were the reason for getting up every morning. And he had a good, cheerful personality. The family came to America in 2000. Arkady had a heart attack yesterday morning, Shabbat morning, and he, he died. He passed away. And when Ludmila walked into the room, he was already cool to the touch, and he had passed away. He stopped breathing. And so this is, uh, this is like lightning. You know, striking ground from a, a clear blue sky. It, there's no lightning outside. There are no clouds outside, but it's like lightning because it's such a shock. And so we, we grope. We, we search for words to express our grief, but the words are difficult to find. There was so much left that we wanted to do. There was so much left he wanted to do. There was so much more that he wanted to share with his dear wife and the children and the grandchildren and great-grandchildren. There was so much more that we wanted to do with him. But we also know that each day is a blessing and God makes the final judgment on when we go and how we go. And God has seen fit to call back our Kadi soul to the reservoir of being we were talking about this before, as sad as it is, and it is sad. It's very sad. But we don't know how it goes. You can go quickly, and thank God you went quickly, but you didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Or someone can have Alzheimer's, and in three years, you don't even know, the person doesn't even know you anymore, and then the person finally goes. I, 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 it's sad. And 
it is a bit of a blessing that there was not a long deterioration in suffering, even though it's very sad. Now he is at peace, and there is just rest and wholeness and peace. And just as Shabbat is a time of rest, now for our dear Arkadi, it's a time of rest. His soul is returning to God and to be with the souls of his dear relatives and friends and ancestors of our people. We learn this in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 7. The dust returns to the earth as it was. We will lay the body to rest in the ground, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. In Judaism, we talk of olam haba, the world to come. The world to come is an eternal time, not a place. This is a place. Olam haba is an eternal time, and our souls will be together with the souls of our loved ones in this eternal time, olam haba. We are also sending along a, a Pesach Haggadah. We're wearing the tie for Pesach, but the, for the Haggadah, we send along it is a mitzvah to escort the body of our loved one to its final resting place and also to provide respectful burial for holy books of our tradition. And the Haggadah, outside of uh, Russia, outside of the Soviet Union, for decades we were praying that our Soviet brothers and sisters, our Russian brothers and sisters, would get out. And uh, you're here. And we also pray that we will be freed from things that enslave us. And so he is freed from whatever has been enslaving him in his life. And we are grateful to have known him and to have had relationship with him. We have many, many memories of Arkady. And we give thanks to God for this gift of life. It's a gift of, of long life, but 85 is good until you're 84. I mean, you, you want more, and we want more, and we want more in health. But by the numbers, it, it was a long life, and at the same time, we wanted more. So as we think of him, you should do some fishing. You should uh, work on the dacha. You should be helpful to other people. You should be kind to other people. Make them smile. Help them out. And the world will be compensated for the loss of this good, decent man, this mensch, if we do the things that he would be honored by. So we conclude with words from the first chapter of the book of Job. Adonai Natan, Vadonai Lakach, Yehishem Adonai Mavarach. The Lord hath given, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And let us say Amen. O Jose Shalom Bim Roma. Yaase shalom aleinu ve al kol Yisrael ve imru imru amen. Yaase shalom, yaase shalom, shalom aleinu ve al kol Yisrael. Yaase shalom. Yahase shalom, shalom aleinu, ve'akol Yisrael. May God who causes peace to reign in the high heavens, cause peace to reign down upon us, upon all Israel, and upon the soul of our dearly departed, Arkadi Shantan. And let us say, Amen. Please rise for Amalei Rachamim.
Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to our dear Avram ben Lev, our dear Arkadi. He has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in the shadow of your wings, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace, and let us say, Amen. In a moment, we will leave to go in procession to Mount Sinai Cemetery. And we will say Kaddish for Arkady uh, Wednesday in Hebrew school because the children need reps in the Kaddish. And they'll say Kaddish for him. We'll say Kaddish Friday night. We'll say Kaddish on Sunday mornings in Hebrew in religious school. Every time we have services in the next month, every service, we will say Kaddish for him. It'll be our privilege to do so. And I know he will be on the Kaddish list at other congregations as well. And now a gentleman will come forward and we will go in procession to Mount Sinai Cemetery to lay his body to rest. <laughs> 